what are we driving? Uh huh. Maybe a Peterbilt? It's another test drive. A little touchy on the brakes here. Yeah, look, no stick. So we're taking a test drive on a 2020, I keep forgetting to check the uh, build date. 2020 Peterbilt. It's got uh, 443,000 miles on her. And uh, we'll see. See what happens, right? I don't know. Just kind of got approved. Uh, so, just kind of seeing what what we got going on here. I think she's doing a rejig. <laughs> oh, sounds like it. I don't know what to do. Do you leave it on or what's the deal, yo? Oh. So, there she is. I think, uh, I think we got the brakes cleared up. So, it does have some minor issues. But it has a carrier APU. This here is that's kind of that's kind of out of whack. You're gonna see. Oh yeah, that's kinda I'm gonna see if she's leaking. Something is smoking. Oh. Yeah, I think it is the radiator. So, he said he would fix that. Yeah, I don't know what that smoke is. I know it's doing a regen. Oh well, we'll let it do a regen, right? So I am warming up the beast here. Uh, I need to move tandems, but that's a different video. Anyways, I want to talk about uh, that Peterbilt I went to go look at. So. I'm just going to make this uh, very basic and very uh, quick, right? So this is why it's important to have somebody go with you uh, that's mechanically inclined uh, and knows what they're looking at, right? So I was crawling all over that thing, probably about 30 minutes worth of looking it over. Uh, I found out that uh, U-joint or the pinion shaft going into the uh, first pumpkin there, or differential, was loose. I couldn't tell if it was the actual um, the shaft coming out or if it was because it was just that whole section was just completely loose. Um, I'm thinking it was the uh, the U joints, but again, I couldn't couldn't verify it either way. Um, and then the carrier bearing was bad. 
uh, that's one thing you should always look at. Go under there and shake that drive shaft, right? Because a lot of the times these companies will never change out a carrier bearing. Uh, they'll never change out U-joints. They, you know, it's these companies will just change what needs to be changed when it needs to be changed, right? So, uh, and then when I first got there, uh, I caught the sales guy filling it up with coolant and he was like, oh, he's like, I don't know, it was just leaking coolant. Uh, and there was a big puddle underneath it where the radiator was or where the radiator is, right? And it looked like the radiator was seeping from the bottom. And he said, so again, this is why it's good to, I guess, buy a truck from a dealer um, because he said he would fix everything that, that I found that needed to be fixed. Um, the batteries were dead. Uh, we ran the truck and then turned it off and then tried to turn it back on and it, it wouldn't start. So he said he would replace all the batteries. Um, the other thing about it is the, the truck had high um, engine hours compared to, well, considering it had an APU, right? Uh, so this came off of a big fleet, um, but why, so that was a little concerning to me. Why this, this truck had such high um, engine hours, right? I think it had 11,000 engine hours and it had 443,000 miles on it, which is if you do the math, um, that equivalates, it, is equivalent to that truck having 660,000 miles on it. So it was about 200,000 miles off. And again, it's a Cummings. I'm scared to death of these Cummins. I've, I've had nothing but bad luck with Cummins, but there's kind of a reason why I'm looking at a Cummins. Uh, I'm not gonna divulge that here because I would be stupid to, um, but there's a, there's a certain reason why I'm, I'm kind of interested in, in a Cummins. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I just didn't have the, the vibe. Like when it was going down the road, um, when, I, when I took it for the test drive, I don't know if this is normal, but I don't remember hearing this when I was driving uh, the Peterbilts uh, last year at this time. Uh, but downshifting... Uh, from what was it fifth to sixth I think or no sixth to fifth that would be downshifting uh, there was like a clunking sound like a like a like it, it sounded like the the shifter uh, solenoid um, it didn't sound right uh, so there was that and there was something banging up in the front end when I hit a bump it sounded like there was something loose in there like banging up and down it could have been the hood I don't know I just didn't have a good feeling about the truck it had low mileage and it had you know again the APU uh, APU worked fine uh, but that there was another red flag right so the dealer was like oh yeah I couldn't get the APU to start uh, and he's like there's a switch in there that you need to switch and I was like yeah I, I've heard you know I, I know there's like a you know a safety switch that you can turn on and off right this one didn't have one. So when we pulled the uh, we pulled the bottom cover also, and there's a reset switch in there. Well, that was tripped. It's basically a breaker. Um, so that was tripped. So why was that tripped? I don't know. Not a huge deal, not a huge uh, concern, but it was still like, okay, well, there's another thing that you need to check off of the, uh, you know, uh, this truck isn't, isn't good. So anyways i ended up driving up to uh salt lake from here to go check it out um seven hour round trip eight basically an eight it's three and a half hours up three and a half hours back so uh seven hour round trip and then i spent a good hour hour and a half uh up there um so i am looking at trucks um the dealer has uh five low mileage 2019 so they're they're pre-covid trucks um kenworth t680s uh coming in with the cummins uh they got 350 i think the one that i'm interested in he's given me first choice so that's kind of cool um like they haven't even advertised he's just getting them in uh so 
he's giving me first choice and they're going for really 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 good price because they're 2019 models um, they all have APUs and they're all between 350 and 380 on the uh, on the mileage what's concerning is they are such low mileage for being uh, 2019s um, again there's five of them he didn't tell me what fleet they came from uh, but I told them when he when they come in I'm interested in two uh, when they come in give me the engine hours uh, and then if they're good then I will uh, come up and check them out um, and then there's also a uh, a couple of Volvos I'm looking at. Uh, the It's not the big one. I don't know what the numbers are. They keep changing. The 860s and the 780s or whatever they are. Um, these are the these are the smaller ones. These are the, what is it? The 670s or the, the seven, the 780s or the, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. They're the, they're the 70 inch sleeper instead of the 80 inch sleeper. Um, so kind of interested in those they don't have an apu now there's another volvo that i was looking at that i actually uh was approved for and that's what got this whole thing rolling because i got a better uh finance options than i was uh because i've been looking at other trucks trying i got financed through packar but their rates were just stupid uh, and it wasn't something that that made sense but again there, there's another volvo out in uh, texas that is really really nice um the problem is is going out there and looking at it spending the extra money dealing with it now there's also that option i just i cannot buy a truck sight unseen right and i'm sure that 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 volvo is in good shape um it looks immaculate it's a gorgeous truck i mean it's a it's a cool color it's got all the all the features that i'm looking for um again that that's what i put in financing for and it's something that i could i could definitely swing that's what's going on with this video um there was just way too much problems with that truck uh for me to justify you know spending the money that that they wanted for it so hopefully those t680s come um and I can go look at those and maybe I can find a, a good truck out of that. They're, they're poorly specced as far as gauges, but you can get gauges on eBay for like 120, 200 bucks for that whole panel. Because the way that these trucks work is they're already pre-wired for all of this stuff. Um, it's just depending on what panel they put in there and how much they're gonna charge you extra for those panels. And eBay has them uh, all the time for like 120, 150, 200 bucks or whatever. So I figured, well, that's no big deal. I can just put those gauges in. Uh, I'll order them on eBay and just, you know, put them in myself. But it, it ain't that big of a deal. Um, but other than that, I am looking uh, kind of like if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I, I, got, I got this truck here. Um, she's treating me good. It's just it's it's the comfortability factor this this truck has zero insulation it actually has holes uh draft comes in here uh down here on the boot uh which can be fixed but uh, again it's there's like drafts that come in everywhere on this thing when the wind is blowing and when you're driving and the wind is blowing into your truck and it's like 20 degrees outside the heater isn't going to keep up um it's just a very drafty truck uh and then in the summertime it gets so hot in here uh it's just there's no insulation there's nothing in this truck right this is very this is a bare bone company truck when it was uh in its heyday right this was this was on a actually a a, a mega carrier or somewhat of a mega carrier uh out in california so anyways i just wanted to make this let you know what was going on um but yeah i am looking at some trucks uh i know i know the admission shit and all this but again i'm not gonna say anything if you can read in between the lines on that one but uh so we'll let you know what happens thanks for watching bye all righty where are we i don't know in a quarter mile you will arrive at your destination all righty 
We're out here in California. California. A. See where we're going in a quarter of a mile. I don't know why the GPS takes you this way. Uh, oh, there it is. You have arrived. Look at that. Okay. Here we are, baby. Uh... Yeah, she's like, oh, we have a big parking lot. Mm, okay. Service manager parking only. Ah, uh, this is not that big of a parking lot. <laughs> okay, anyways, let's see if we can find out customer parking. All right. Let's see what we got. Well, here she is. Mm. Oh, that didn't stay closed, huh? Okay. <laughs> uh, why are all these trucks that I look at junk? I don't get it. But it does have the wheel covers on it. So that's good. APU. Uh, see, that's how it's supposed to come apart. Wonder why there's an X here. Hmm. So, it is missing plastic piece there. But it has a saddle box. That's good. I need one of them. Let's see if this can be broken into. <laughs> Let's see. They got it. No. All right. Well. See, I like to take a look at these before before the salesman comes out, right? But uh, just because I don't like them hassling, like, whoa, yeah, we got this. And apparently it has an oil leak from what they were saying. But I don't know. And they said I can't test drive it because there's only one guy here. <laughs> so I don't know what, what that has to do with anything. But uh, apparently they won't let me test drive it. I don't know what that thing is dangling there. So anyways... We'll check it out. Well, apparently now it's derating, so. She just told me that the check engine light came on. She didn't tell me that it was derating. But yeah, I'm not allowed to drive it. Uh, so, <laughs> I don't know what that is. I'm not sure what, uh, what that, that but now it says no fault, so I don't know. Oh God, no. Oh, we'd have to get rid of that shit. Increase D-rate in four hours. Seek service immediately. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. I don't know what that is. Oh. Uh. So it's in it's in serious D rate mode, right? It's got the it's got everything. Uh, I don't know. Let's go see. I guess that's a good sign, right? I can't win.
I don't know. Maybe that's a sign that I, I need to stay away from these trucks. She didn't tell me it was in D-rate mode. She just said the check engine light came on. I don't know. Maybe it just needs a forced regen, right? Maybe it needs a whole fucking DPF system. That would be nice. Not the minimum. But this coolant tank looks a lot better than the uh, than the other coolant tank in that other Peterbilt that I test drove. And the uh, fuel system doesn't look black. Now, let's see how are we looking on air oh and it doesn't have the smart steering wheel oh well that's a problem well, that sucks mm. I kind of dig the smart steering wheel I wonder how you do the uh, cruise control oh there's a the cruise control lane departure light uh, I don't know what the lane departure is. Oh. Maybe that's not working. Maybe that's what that means. I don't know. They didn't clean the floor. But it does have an APU. I thought it had more shit than this. Let's see. Refrigerator should be here. I guess not. I guess they don't give Martin refrigerators, huh? Nope, no refrigerator. Well, we can't do that. And it doesn't look like the APU system uh, working. Let's see. I don't know. Yeah. This wasn't what I expected. Well, they don't give Martin too many uh, luxuries, huh? I mean, I kind of would like to have the smart steering wheel. Gauges I can get. No wonder it's $60,000. I think... Uh... <laughs> oh, man. And it doesn't have the ladder. Oh, yeah, it does. It has a ladder. Well, I don't know. It doesn't have a refrigerator. Oh, it has an AP, or I mean, an inverter. It has the inverter. All right, well, let's, let's do see. a force regen on this bitch, huh? How about that? Maybe that'll fucking clear the fault. Let's see what that does. But, I don't know, I'm not too, uh, not too impressed. I would like to have the smart steering wheel, right? But it has 425,000 miles on it, and the engine hours are, uh, let's see. The engines are only 9,500. The other truck that I looked at had 11,000. So that's what got me excited about this truck. But I don't know, man. No refrigerator, which I mean, I guess is fine. I don't know what that dangly is. It's got the stupid collision mitigation system. Maybe that goes to like, maybe they had a dash cam in here, right? Uh, I don't know, I don't know. We're gonna let it do a regen and see if that clears the code. And I don't know what that, uh, that is this, but. That doesn't go out, so. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Oh, look at the vents gone too. God, man, why don't these company people take care of their shit? 
I don't know. APU never kicked on, but that might be because uh, it's got a red light, so that's kind of concerning. Um, I don't know. It's just, I'm being very, very picky, right? Because it's, this is going to be my truck that I'm going to fucking drive. So I need to be picky. But I'm going to let this thing do a regen. And uh, that's what I'm saying. The engine hours is what's got me. Right? The engine hours are the... Is what got me happy. But... Maybe I'll look at the Volvo. I found out. Uh, air conditioner's not blowing cold. And the bunk... The bunk AC... There's nothing coming out. So, I don't know what this is. That shit fell off there. Um, so I don't get that one. I don't understand. I got a full blast. Uh, I don't think this has anything to do with this. I could be wrong. I don't know. So... This truck has some issues. Again, dealers just take these things in and they expect you to find the problem and then they will fix that problem. So when you're looking at a truck at a dealership, you need to be very diligent on what you're looking for because they will fix anything and everything uh, as long as it's a, I mean, I'm not gonna say a DOT thing because obviously they would have to uh, recharge the AC right um and then figure out why the bunk ac isn't working um they would obviously you know look into that uh yeah this isn't blowing that cold at all so that's what i'm saying if if you don't feel comfortable in getting a uh figuring this stuff out yourself take a mechanic with you because anything that mechanic finds will definitely, I know it gets expensive. I wonder what happened. To, <laughs> oh, I don't know what happened to the thing here. Oh man. And then again, that's missing. They might, I could probably tell them to replace that. Um, but I think I'm going to pass on this truck for one. It's in California. Um, so the switch was off on this. For one, it's in California, and I don't want to dick with this shit coming back and forth. Because uh, they were like, oh, just, you know, we're going to clear the codes, and then you can bring it back, or you can come back and test drive it. Like, now, and then the coolant level went way down. It was up here. Now it's down here, so I don't get that one, but maybe because it does something with the regen and directs the cool in other places, I don't know. But I think I'll pass on it. It's a pretty color. It's an old Martin truck. So I think... Uh, definitely been towed see that's kind of the little things you need to keep an eye on right so you know it's been towed because of the tow marks I don't know I was gonna tell the guy hey I started this up and like five minutes later it started doing a regen so uh, I'm just going to let it finish doing a region. <laughs> but. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways. I like the engine hours on it. But it doesn't have everything that I want. Again, if I'm going to buy a truck. 
especially an emissions truck, it's gonna have everything that I want, right? And I don't think I'm too picky. And it doesn't have a, uh, it has a, this is the problem with vans, uh, van companies. Because Martin mainly does, well, no, they do fucking reefer, so I don't know. Doesn't have a sliding fifth wheel. But it has a kingpin release, which I like. I like kingpin releases. Um, I don't know, man. Doesn't have the smart wheel, which I could probably live with that. Um, I don't know. I'm on the fence. Oh, and it doesn't have a fridge. Which again, I could probably live with that, but so we'll probably just go from there. All right, we'll let you know. Oh, what do you guys think? What is that? It's an international. We're gonna go take her for a test drive. And look, somebody bought one and it's already here. And look what engine it has. <laughs> it's the Cummins. He actually blew the uh, AC compressor, so. This one has an A26. I know, I know. Um, but uh, it'll come with a warranty. And um, yeah, it's got the Endurant. It's got the Endurant 12 speed transmission. So we're going to take her for a test drive and. Uh, See what she feels like so far i love this transmission but so far so good truck number two uh this is an old warner truck so here's the crazy thing it's got 391,000 miles on it and it's only got 6,000 hours on the engine this is a freaking 61 mile per hour truck and it's blue, my company's colors, see? Um, so the good thing about this truck, $32,000, $32,000. He says he's gonna fix that stuff. He's gonna fix the drawer. Uh, he'll put a bed on it, I guess. It's got the heater, it's got the double bunk, which is what I want. Um, he's gonna fix all these cabinets. If I decide to go this route. So. I mean, it's a basic for 32 grand. I mean, holy crap, you can't go wrong. You can't lift up the bed, I don't think. I don't know what that's about. Uh, but. The only other thing is, is it has the 10 speed transmission, which I've heard about. And then uh, it has the A26, but it's it also, it's gonna, for the international warranty, I can get for seven grand for two years and this thing will be covered bumper to bumper. Basically transmission. Oh, and then it's got a engine a short block because of internationals uh throwing rods until 2027 so this thing would be covered completely for under forty thousand dollars so anyways i'm gonna go take it for a test drive the other one i test drove i love that 12 speed this has got a 10 speed so we're gonna figure it out all right so on those trucks we had the two trucks now they were both a26s um, one was a Pacific truck, the yellow, the yellow one, uh, it had an EPU and it had the 12 speed endurant, um, but it had the A26 engine. And again, I could get warranty. Uh, the weird thing is, is that truck had what it had almost 500,000 miles and I think the engine hours were at like 14,000 I think which is like wow that's that's a lot of engine hours on that engine so 
uh, and it was making weird noises. Um, so he said he they had some more out in Springfield, um, and he says I could I could pick and choose, you know, depending on the engine hours. Um, but I don't know that that A twenty six engine scares me. Uh, just so here's my thought on the A twenty six engine. I have a Cummins uh, authorized repair shop dealer, whatever, three miles from my house. Um, the closest that I know of international that can work on that truck is down in Las Vegas. So anytime I would need any kind of work done, any, any kind of parts, any kind of anything, uh, I'd have to go to Vegas. I'm sure there's one up here in Salt Lake. Um, so that that is what scares me. Um, I really like that blue truck. Um, again, the it, it, it was the price. I could have got full on warranty, everything for forty thousand um, dollars, and my payment would have probably been around a thousand dollars a month, which is absolutely awesome. Um, but it had the ten speed transmission. That ten speed was so jerky. When you let off and it went into first gear, it like, you know, jerked the whole truck. Um, it's like it's it, like you dump the clutch is is how hard um, it goes. Now, having a load on, it kind of concerns me because if it's doing that um, and it's basically dumping the clutch, that, that clutch ain't going to last very long. Um, so... And then I kind of, he showed me because again, an A26 has to be worked on at an international dealership. Uh, so he was showing me a lot of the stuff that was already done to it. And within a hundred and like 50,000 miles, the, uh, the DOC went out, um, which is the, 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 whatever it is called the, the catalyst, right? The, the, the major thing, like it's an expensive part. Um, I can't, I can't think of what it's called right now. Um, but yeah, the, the DOC went out on it. Um, again, that's at 130 some thousand miles, 136 An injector went out on it. And, you know, like I said, that truck only had like 390,000 miles on it or something. So that kind of scared me. Um, so I will say, and I'll do a truck tour on it, but I did end up basically purchasing a uh, 2021 uh, International LT. So I will show you that in the next uh, video. But uh, yeah, man, I'm very excited. Uh, the terms were right. The payments right. Everything on it is 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 good. I'm happy with it. Um, so we'll let you know what happens with that, and uh, do a do the infamous truck tour, and I'll explain why I did it. Um, I'll be sad to see this girl go. A lot of work has been done to it. A lot of money has been put into it. But uh, there are reasons why this was always a temporary truck. This was always to get me through COVID, uh, all the bullshit that was going on with COVID, with the part shortages, with all that stuff. Um, I would have loved to have ripped the engine out of this and put it into something that was more spacious for me, that had two bunks. Um, at one time, this did have two bunks, but it just, it, it's too small of a truck. It really is too small of a truck. Um, and it's just, it's, uh, I mean, it's a small truck and it's, it, it's, it's a very basic truck. Um, it does what it needs to do. And that is to get, you know, freight down the road. So anyways. I will let you know. Um, yeah, I'm very excited and I will let you know, but I have decided to go with an international and uh, we'll show you the engine, the transmission, um, 
you know, I'll show you the whole thing. But until then, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.